This session is about textiles and in this video I'll be talking about the different types of fibres um, that textiles are produced from, where the textile fibres come from and what are the different types of yarns and the different types of fabrics or textile products that can be made. So first of all the main two areas that um, textiles are taken from are natural and synthetic sources. Now um, these can be broken down into um, a third area as well, which is regenerated fabrics, and I'll talk about that briefly in a little while. But effectively, natural fibres are anything that came come from nature. So uh, three examples that you might need to know about are cotton, wool, and silk. So cotton obviously comes from a cotton plant. Wool comes from sheep, or it could come from other sort of animals like alpacas. Um, and silk comes from the cocoons of a silk worm. Now synthetic fibres on the other hand are manufactured or they are man-made and three examples of these are elastane uh, which is also under the brand name of lycra or spandex you might know it as, polyester which might be known as dacron and polyamide which you'll probably more commonly known as nylon which is uh, uh, the, the trademark given to it by the DuPont company. So. These two types of um, fabrics come from different areas, obviously. Natural fibres generally have um, good properties for breathability, um, whereas the uh, more synthetic fibres are generally quite hard wearing and, and strong, but they don't have the sort of natural breathability fibres. Now, I talked briefly about regenerated fibres, and these are kind of somewhere in between. So, regenerated fibres. Uh, things like viscose effectively have a natural source like a cellulose which is taken from a plant or in some cases like wood um, and these are sort of broken down with chemicals to get the natural fibres out which are then again spun into different um, types of yarns. Now with natural fibres the types of yarns are generally quite short and they have a sort of a, a sort of a hairy I suppose tiny hair type texture about them okay so these staple fibers are generally coming from natural sources so cotton wool silk you know even human hair effectively could be considered a staple fiber now because these are quite short they need to be kind of twisted together or spun as the the term might be uh, said to basically produce a longer um, yarn that we can actually use for weaving or for knitting for example now synthetic fibers which are derived from um, oil or coal in some cases generally have a much longer fiber and these are called uh, filaments okay now filaments can be made made into yarns obviously a, a bit easier because they don't need to be spun initially so when they they are extracted from the oil or extracted from the coal they come as filament in terms of their form now fibers and yarns can be used to make a range of different fabrics but there are different ways in which these fabrics can be produced okay so wo woven fabrics are made obviously by weaving and they're made by interlacing different um, yarns so two different sets of yarns in two different directions uh, to form a, a fabric okay so the example you can see underneath there is is a type of a woven fabric now there's many many different patterns that can be made and these patterns can be made by weaving the uh, the fibers or sorry the yarns in different ways now the only other sort of key terms that you might need to know about in terms of weaving is the direction that the two yarns are taking so if the uh, yarn is going from right to left okay that is called the weft whereas if the yarn is going up and down this is called the warp Okay, I like to remember this by thinking um, of if you know about Star Trek and warp drive, if you imagine that's going up into space, the warp goes up and the weft, which goes from right to left, weft obviously rhymes with left, so we can kind of remember it from those two things. So that's woven fabrics. Now, knitted fabrics, you'll probably be a bit more familiar with because you've probably seen someone using knitting needles uh, at some point, okay? Now, commercial fabrics are obviously made on large knitting machines, but the principle is effectively the same. And this is uh, taking a long uh, piece of yarn or pieces of yarn and creating loops to lock the different yarns together and creating rows of uh, knitted fabric. Now, obviously, just like uh, weaving, if we uh, lock the loops of yarn together in different ways, we can create patterns within the uh, 
the the, the um, knitted fabric or we can create just different textures and things through knitting and uh, knotting the the yarns together in different ways so that's knitted fabric now the other main um, area of fabric I suppose production is non woven or more commonly known as bonded fabrics nowadays now with this they start with a web of fibers so if you imagine lots and lots of little strands of hair or strands of wool or something like this that are all kind of laid out okay and they need to be bonded together with some sort of um, some sort of uh, method so you can either use effectively like a glue or a resin that helps to bond these fibers together in some cases they use needle punching so sort of pushing the needle down and punching the the fibers through a, another substrate to kind of make it to join together they can obviously be stitched together they can be melted in some case to fuse all those fibers together or in a more traditional sense you might know of felting so felting is an, a, a sort of an older way of making non-woven fabrics and basically um, if you've seen it done, generally they get lots and lots of fibres, they apply some water and moisture to the, the thing, and then use pressure and heat to kind of lock those fibres together, okay? So felt nowadays can be used for things like underlay, or as you might have used it as a craft material, um, but bonded fabrics are used quite a lot, for example, in the... Um, the health industries because obviously um, they need a very quick and disposable way of bonding these fibers together to make um, for example uh, garments that uh, a patient might wear in theater that can then be thrown away so they need a very cheap and uh, quick way of making fabrics and bonded fabrics is one way of doing this now the only other thing that I'd suggest is uh, useful in terms of types of um, uh, fabrics or types of materials effectively in the textile industry is fabrics that are made by blending or mixing different fabrics together now if you've watched my other video where I'm talking about composites you'll know that if we take two different um, uh, materials and put them together we generally do this because we want properties from one material and properties of another material to be joined together so if we blend two fabrics together for example uh, poly cotton which is a blend of polyester and cotton we get some of the natural benefits of cotton the breathability whereas we also get the hard wearing and the easy washability properties that comes with manufactured or synthetic fabrics like polyester now you can have a little look at the end of the session now and there are some questions to revise from as well.